Well, from what I know, people in Gaza cannot simply leave. They cannot usually go to Egypt, especially when there are things brewing, like, like right now. Egypt simply wants nothing to do with Hamas, so they don't take any chances. And people living in Gaza generally cannot go to Israel. That part is a little complicated, however. But for all intents and purposes, they cannot really leave. Their ability to get basic necessities is dependent on Israel allowing for it. When it comes to water, this is partially due to Hamas digging up water pipes that were originally paid for by the EU and repurposing them to be used for missile launching. There are videos of Hamas flaunting this. Hamas doesn't care about the Palestinians. All they seem to care about is their extreme death cult. At least that's what I'm going to call it. But the Palestinians voted for Hamas in 2006. And so many of the people who push for Palestinian independence, like the ones who chant, Free, Free Palestine, refuse, they simply refuse to denounce Hamas. In fact, a number of them will consider Hamas to be freedom fighters. There was BLM Chicago who posted this disgusting image, celebrating the attacks. I could never quite understand why BLM so often puts horrible people and horrible actions up on some sort of pedestal. It's weird. Look, Hamas will happily use Palestinians as human shields. And when it comes to their adversaries, Hamas will happily rape, murder, and torture women, children, and the elderly in their homes, like they did in their recent attacks in Israel. Which, sadly, again, spawned this image. And one of the things that seems rather common at a lot of these pro-Palestinian protests, you know, when you, when you hear people interviewed and some of the signs that you see people carrying, there's the notion that Israel is an occupier and that they need to leave. Many of these activists are simply not pushing for a two-state solution. Sometimes you hear them chant, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, which clearly indicates a one-state solution. So when you hear free, free Palestine, it's hard to know whether they mean a two-state solution or if they think Israel should be dismantled. Having said that, Israel's initial responses to the brutal Hamas attacks were awful and continue to be horrible. It's almost unimaginable that Israel would cut off all basic necessities to Gaza, claiming that it's all about forcing Hamas to return the hostages. But Hamas probably isn't going to return the hostages. And Hamas doesn't care how much and how many Palestinians suffer. And I think the government of Israel knows this already. And that's what makes their actions that much more horrible. The everyday people living in Gaza should not be the enemy of Israel. And on an official level, they're not. At least when it comes to the words that come out of the mouths of the politicians and government officials. But Hamas strategically places themselves in places where the only way to target them is to also target innocent civilians. Yeah, it's an intelligent move, but morally bankrupt. So it does leave Israel in an awful position. And make no mistake about it, there are a lot of anti-Jewish Palestinians and a lot of anti-Muslim Israelites. The bigotry is taught from early ages. How do you solve that deep of hatred on either side? But cutting off basic necessities and then giving people 24 hours uh, to go from North Gaza to South Gaza or be killed is not cool. And, and how do the civilians actually know that they won't simply be targets if they try to flee? And it seems it's only going to get worse. It starts to resemble a genocide the more that time goes on, especially when there are people that are basically calling for the complete leveling of Gaza. Yes, this is wartime, and technology allows us to see just how awful war is than, than we ever have.